Hello everyone, we're going to get started on our math topic three assessment. So if you would please grab your Envision workbook and we're going to be on page 161. 161. And I'll go grab the camera while you get your workbook open. All right. So we're on page 161. We're going to work on our topic three assessment together. And then there will be specific questions on our Edmodo test today that will be based on this lesson. So you want to make sure you do this lesson before you do your um, math question of the day test. All right. So let's look at number one. Krista arranged her buttons in an array, which, show, which shows a way to break Krista's array into two smaller arrays. So first of all, let's see how many we have. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven on the top. All right. Let's get closer. Still. There we go. Okay. So now, could we break it into a... 3 times 6 and a 3 times 1. Would that work? That would make this total thing be 3 times 7. Would that work? No. Let's try 3 times 7 plus 3 times 7. That would be breaking it up right here. 3 times 7 and 3 times 7. So that would work color in B, and let's go to C. 3 times 6 plus 3 times 6. That wouldn't work because there's 7. 3 times 7 plus 4 times 7. 3 and 4 make 7, so that would be 7 times 7, so that wouldn't work. So just B for that one. Okay? Everyone have B marked on that one? Let's go to number two. Choose yes or no to tell if 16 is the missing product. So four times four. What does four times four equal? 16, so yes. Two times eight is eight plus eight. That makes 16, yes. Two times four. No, that's not 16. 8 times 2, well, we did 2 times 8, so we know that's 16, so yes. So we have three yeses and one no. Make sure you get everything written down. All right, we're going to go to number 3. Jeff makes the generalization that a tens fact can be broken into two fives facts. Write an equation to test his generalization. All right, let's try um, let's do 10 times 7. All right, we can break that into a 5 times 7 plus a 5 times 7. 5 times 7, we can skip count. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. 35 plus 35. Okay. 5 plus 5 is 10. Carry 1. 3 plus 3 is 6. Plus 1 more is 7. So 10 times 7 equals 70. So that works, doesn't it? That tests his generalization. You can break a 10 into two fives. All right, make sure you get everything written down. Push pause if you need to.
Okay, we're going to move on. So if you do need to push pause, go ahead and do that now. All right, we're on to number four. June broke up a large array into a three times four array and a five times four array. What was the large array that June started with? So basically we have three times four plus five times four. So we don't even have to draw the array. Now, if you wanted to draw the array, array you could, but we know that they broke this up into two smaller arrays. So we just have to put them back together. So three plus five equals eight. Four is the same, eight times four. That was the array they started with, was eight times four. All right. Uh, go ahead and make sure you have that written down. If you wanna solve it, we can solve that too. Um, three times four is 12. 5 times 4 is 20, so that equals 32. Alrighty, if you still need some more time, go ahead and press pause. We're going to move to number five. Which facts can you use to find four times eight? Can we break it up into a two times eight and a two times nine? That wouldn't work, would it? Because then that would be two times 17. How about a two times eight and a two times eight? Yes, we could do that one. What about a two times four and a one times eight? Well, you can't break up both the first two and the second two, so that wouldn't work. How about breaking it into a four times five plus a four times three? The four stays the same. The five and the three added make an eight, so that would work. How about a three times eight and a one times eight? The eight stays the same, and we're trying to get to four. One plus three is four, so that would work too. All right, make sure you have those marked down. We're gonna go to number six. A bakery uses three cups of flour to make each loaf of bread. There are three loaves of bread on a tray. There are six trays on a cart. How many cups of flour are used to make a full cart of bread? Show your work. All right. So a bakery uses three cups of flour to make each loaf. And there are three loaves on a tray. And there are six trays on a cart. So we have three times th uh, three times six. All right, so we can show two different ways that we could solve this problem. We could do three times three times six. We always do the parentheses first. Three times three is nine. Nine times six, I can do my nines trick. And I put down my sixth finger, that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, four. Okay. I could also try it another way. I could do three times, three times six. That would equal three times 18. And if I did 18, three times, added them together, that would equal 54. So how many cups of flour are used to make a full cart? 54 cups.
8 plus 8 is 16, plus 8 more is 24. 4 down, carry the 2, 2, 3, 4, 5. Just gonna serve that. Okay, if you need more time, go ahead and press pause right now because I'm going to move down to number seven, okay? All right, number seven. What number makes this equation correct? All right, three times four, four, eight, twelve, plus three times four is twelve, two plus two is four, and one plus one is two. 24. Alrighty, so you should have everything done on page 161. See if I can get it back far enough that you can see everything. Okay. Okay, if you need to freeze that page, pause that page so you can get anything written down that you're missing, go ahead and do that. All right, we're going to turn to page 162. Hang on while I get real close here so you can see. Okay. Casey has three bags of baseballs. There are six baseballs in each bag. How many baseballs does Casey have? Three groups of six. There's three groups of six. Eighteen. All right, we're going to slide up to number nine. Jonathan organizes his pictures into a six by four array. Kim organizes her pictures into a seven by five array, seven times five array. How can Kim and Jonathan break apart their arrays? Write each pair of facts in the correct space. So the facts that we're going to be looking at, I need to back up a little bit so you can see it all. There we go. Let's look at five times five and two times five. That would be seven times five. So those would go up here. Five times five plus two times five. Okay. Okay. One times four and five times four. One plus five is six times four. So that goes up here. 1 times 4 plus 5 times 4. So we got that one. All right. 
4 times 5 and 3 times 5, we can do the 4 and the 3 makes 7. 5 stays the same, so that goes under here. 4 times 5 plus 3 times 5. Let me cross that one off. Okay, let's go to the next one. 1 times 5 and 6 times 5. 1 and 6 make 7, and 5 stays the same. So I'm going to put that under the 1, or the 7 times 5. 1 times 5 and 6 times 5. Okay, looking at the last one, 3 times 4 and 3 times 4. 3 plus 3 is 6. 4 stays the same, so 6 times 4. So we're going to do 3 times 4 plus 3 times 4. We've got them all separated. All right, I'll give you just a moment. Get all, make sure you have all of those written down. I should have five sets of equations. Two in the six times four and three in the seven times five. All right, so we should have all of those written down. Let's go to number 10. Number 10 says, which of the expressions below can you use to solve three times two times four? Choose all that apply. Could we do three times four times two? The numbers would be the same. Yes, we can do that. How about 3 times 3 times 3? Would that work? You'd have to take 1 away from here and bring it there to make that 3 times 3, three times 3. But that's not the same numbers that we had. Let's wait on that one. 4 times 3 times 1. Well, the only way we could make that right is if we took 1 away from there. Nope, that wouldn't work. How about 4 times 2 times 3? 4 times 2 times 3. That would work because that's in that equation. How about 4 times 2 times 4? Nope, that wouldn't work. We'd have to take things from different places. So just those two. We can arrange these factors in any order, and the answer will still be the same. Okay, we're going to move up to 11. Make sure you have those marked down. All right, 11. Almost finished here already. All right, Amy arranged her counters into this array. We have a 1, 2, 3, and let's count the top. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. She has 9 up here. Okay. What two facts could Amy use to write an equation for the array? Okay, we have our facts right here, right? We can do 3 times 9 or 9 times 3. 
but the one that we see is the 3 times 9. Okay, make sure you have that written down. If you need to, push pause. We're going to move to part B. If Amy adds one more row of nine counters to her array, can she still use the facts you wrote in part A to find the total number? Explain why or why not. Okay, so she adds one more row. So if we added one more row up here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It says, if Amy adds one more row of nine to her array, can she still use the facts you wrote in part A to find the total number? Explain why or why not. Can she still use it? Yes, she can. Okay, we're going to show how she can. Three times nine is the original um, equation. Let me back it up a little bit here. 3 times 9 is the original um, equation, and then we're just adding another row. So we can add 1 times 9. 3 times 9, we can do our 9's trick. Put down our third finger, 27. Plus, what's 1 times 9? Nine? 9. 9 plus 7 is 16, so you put your 6 here, carry your 1, nothing here, 3, 36. Okay, yes she can. She just adds the new row to the first. The, um, let me put original, original rows. Let me get close so you can see that. Sorry, that's kind of ran together. She just adds the new row to the original rows. These were the original, and then she added one. So go ahead and get your uh, all of this written down in your box there. All right, you're going to need to push pause if you're still writing, and then just come back when you're done. All right, we're going to go to number 12. Tim's family rented a canoe for six hours on Monday and two hours on Tuesday. How much did they spend? Show any equation you used. Okay, so this is where we're going to use our distributive property. We're going to find out how much Monday was and then how much Tuesday was and put them together. So it costs $7 for each hour. So the first day was six hours and they cost $7 an hour. The second day, it was two hours and they still cost $7 an hour. Okay. So now we have to figure out what six times seven is. So we can add uh, seven, we can skip count by sevens, seven, 14, 21, do you guys remember this one, the song? 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49, 56, 
63, 70, do you remember the song? 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49, 56, 63, 70, 77, 84. Remember that one? We'll remember forevermore. So I wrote all my skip counting because I sang the song. And now I'm just going to count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I said 6. I'm at 42. 7 plus 7, that would be two sevens. That's 14. 4 plus a 2 is 6. 1 plus a 4 is 5. So you have 56. They spent $56. That's a lot. But they did get to go for eight hours, so that is pretty good. So there are lots, lots of different strategies that you can do. You can add, you know, you can um, skip count, you can memorize any of those things. All of those things actually help. But I like to skip count. I think of the song and I write it down. 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49, 56, 63, 70, 77, 84. I'll remember forevermore. Then I just go count them. Because it said six. One, two, three, four, five, six. If I said what is seven times nine, I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's why sometimes those songs really help us do our stuff faster. All right, so if you need a few um, more minutes or seconds to get this finished, go ahead and pre press pause right now because we're going to head over to page 163. So we can finish up. All right. Okay. It says school fair. Kay and Ben are helping to organize the school fair. Kay is organizing the school band. Ben is organizing the bake sale. The three times seven array at the right shows how chairs have been set up for the school band. Use the array to show how the new array will look. Okay, or use the, the excuse me, use the array to answer questions one and two. Sorry about that. K wants to have chairs in a six times seven array. Add to the array to show how the new array will look. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have one, two, three, and she wants to be six, so we need to add in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now there's four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so we have seven chairs in a row, and there are six rows. It says draw a line to show one way K can separate the chairs into two smaller arrays. Well, right here, I can break it up and evenly. Okay, make sure you get all of these drawn in and separate them in the middle. All right, part B says, K wants to know the number of chairs in each new array. 
write a multiplication fact for each of the new arrays to show how she can find this. So this is three groups of seven, and this is three groups of seven. Okay. So thinking of my seven song, I'm going to do it three times. Seven, 14, 21. Okay, so 21, and this is going to be the same, 21. One and one is two, and two and two is four. 42 chairs. All right, so let's look at part C. K wants to find the total number of chairs that are being used. Show how to use the facts in part B to find the total number of chairs. Oh, okay. So in this part, I was only we were only supposed to write three times seven plus three times seven, and then we were gonna solve it down here. So we can just write, she needs 42 chairs because we solved it up above. All right, so that is the end of page 163, and we were talking about K, so I have a feeling the next page on 164 is going to be about Ben's bake sale. All right, so if you need any of this, go ahead and press pause. We're going to go to page 164. Okay, we've got a chart over here. It says, the bake sale table shows the baked goods Ben has for sale at the school fair. Use the bake sale table to answer questions three, four, and five. Okay, so it says bake sale. Baked goods, number of trays, number on each tray, the cost per tray. We have blueberry muffins, four, number, four on a tray. There are seven trays. They cost $6 a tray. Strawberry tarts, there are seven on a tray. There are eight trays. They are $4 a tray. Granola bars, she has eight, or he has eight. There are six trays and $3 a tray. All right. So it says, Ben sells four trays of granola bars in the morning and four trays of granola bars in the afternoon. How much money does this raise? Show your work. Ben sells four trays of granola bars. Okay. Granola bars. There are eight on a tray. Um... and he sells four trays and they're $4 each. Okay, so four trays of granola bars in the morning and four trays of granola bars in the afternoon. How much money does this raise? All right, so we need to do, the morning is four trays times six on each tray times uh, $3, okay? So we can do, Four times six is 24 times three. Skip counting by tw twos three times, 20, 40, 60, and then we have three of these fours, four, eight, and 12. So I'm gonna add the 60 and the 12 to get 72. I'm sorry, you can't see that. To get 72, okay? Then it says, in the afternoon, how much money does this raise? All right, then the afternoon, we could do it the other way. We could do four times six times three. We could put that. Six times three is 18, four times 18. Well, if we have four 18s, that's 18, 18, 18, 18. Okay, right off the bat, we have 10, 20, 30, 40. So I'm gonna hold 40 here. Then I have 16 and 16. So 16 plus 16. 6 plus 6 is 12. Carry 1, 32. We're going to add 32 here. 2, 7. Okay. So how much money does he raise? 
he raises $72. Those are equal. It said, show your work, and boy, did we. I'm going to give you a few minutes to fill those in. And the way I got 60 was I added 20 plus 20 plus 20. And then I got uh, the 4, 4 times, well, I did 4 3 times, that makes 12. The way I got 40 is I added these 10s. And then I added these uh, 2 16s to make 32 and I added them all together. All right, if you need some more time, I'd like you to go ahead and press pause right now because we're going to move on to number four. All right, Ben organizes the blueberry muffins into a four times seven array. Part A, Ben breaks up the array of blueberry muffins into two arrays that look the same. At the right, draw the two arrays of blueberry muffins. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 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 All right, so this is two rows of seven, and this is two rows of seven. Okay, go ahead and get that written in. All right, if you need some more time, go ahead and press pause. We're going to go to part B. Ben wants to check the total number of blueberry muffins. He knows 2 times 7 equals 14. How can he use this to find the total number of blueberry muffins? Okay, so we know that they're the same because it was a 4 times 7 and they broke it up into two smaller arrays. So if we know that two times seven is 14, and we have to add the, the other one, two times seven, then we know it's gonna be 14 as well. So they're gonna equal four plus four is eight, and one plus one is two. Two blueberry muffins. Or 28, excuse me, 28 blueberry muffins. Where did I get the two? Goodness sakes. Two blueberry muffins. 28 blueberry <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, my goodness, boys and girls. It's a good thing it's Friday, right? 28 blueberry muffins. Not two. So if they're both the same, and if we know one, then we know the answer to the other one, right? That's how we can find it.
Okay, if you need more time, go ahead and press pause. We're going to go to number five. It says two friends each bought three trays of strawberry tarts. Ben says they spent more than $20 in total. Do you agree? Explain. So just like in our, our reading interactive notebook yesterday, we talked about citing our evidence and explaining our evidence. So that's what they want us to do is explain our evidence. All right, two friends each bought three trays of strawberry tarts. Okay. There are the trays cost four dollars each right okay so let's go back down here so friend number one bought three trays and they are four dollars a tray and friend number two bought three trays and they're four dollars for each tray three times four equals Four, eight, twelve. Four, eight, twelve. All right. So we take the twelve plus the twelve. Two plus two is four. One plus one is two. They spent twenty four dollars all together. So Ben is correct. They spent more than $20. All right. Lots to write. Give you a few uh, moments to get that written down. Okay, now <clears throat> you'll want to make sure you have everything that we've just done together written down because our quiz is just going to be about these questions that we've done and these answers that we've done. Um, and so all you're going to have to do when you're doing your test is go back to these red pages here in topic three and look up the answer and select the correct answer. Okay, it's pretty simple. So let me back this up a little so you can get the whole page. Um, and hopefully you can see everything written there. So if you need to freeze that page or pause that page so you can see everything, go ahead. And then if you need to do the same thing for page 163, go ahead. And if you need to pause on page 162 to get everything in, make sure you have it all written down. You can do that. That's a little hard to read right there, isn't it? Let's see if I can hold the book open. Okay. And then we already did the first page where I had you freeze the first page if needed. All right. So that is going to do it for topic three. Um, so you will need to be wrapping up your IXL list of topic three. I will be checking those um, starting this weekend. So 
you're going to want to make sure you have all of your um, IXL finished for that um, at least by Wednesday of this next week because on Monday we're going to be getting a new list. Um, but I will allow you to finish up the other list. The only thing you may have to um, look back on with the, the topic three list that is in IXL. Let me show you where it is. Okay, so you're in math and you go to folders. Here's IXL. And you will click on the list of IXL starred assignments for topic three. Okay. And there they are. They're all listed there. So you can go through and check off and make sure you've gotten all of these um, finished. Okay. There we go. So you can go through the whole list and find out which ones you still need to finish. And then on Monday, I'll start putting in topic four. So we're cruising right along, guys. Um, doing a good job. Oh, apparently we're going shopping. Oopsie. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to head over and make our quiz in Edmodo based on the assessment and the performance assessment that we just did. So if you've done the whole lesson, it should be easy peasy for you, okay? All right, thank you guys for sticking with me and getting this finished. Um, I, I know it's a lot of work, um, but I'm sure you are just doing the best you can and you're working hard. The biggest secret, let me tell you the big secret. You want to hear the big secret? You know how I say a stitch in time saves nine? Well, it's so true because if you do each lesson and do the homework and correct it, each little day of math that we do at the end of the year, you will have a complete math parachute. Remember we talked about that. You will have a complete math parachute. You will be able to sail into fourth grade no problem. So that's what I want. I want your life to be easier and I want you to have fun and I want you to feel successful. Um, and so that's why it's important to do every single day. Don't skip a day of school um, and make sure you get all of your stuff done that way. So, all right, guys, I'm going to let you go because I'm about to sneeze um, and I'm going to go work on our Edmodo quiz. Oh, I think I'm better now. Um, and thanks for working so hard. And I will see you on Monday. Have a great weekend.